Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Bob from Mount Hall Community Church. Welcome to the Daily Manna. And today is Tuesday, April the 9th, 2024, as we begin our day. I hope you, uh, you folks that were in position, that you had a wonderful time yesterday, enjoying uh, the spectacle of nature, how God had the very heavens declared the glory of God through that full eclipse that took a big swath out of right across the uh, midsection of our country. So I hope you got a good glimpse out of it and that you used proper care and didn't burn out your eyes. So I want to take this opportunity really quick to point out something to you. <clears throat> I've seen this a long time now over the course of my lifetime where planets will align or there'll be an eclipse or one thing or another and a lot of people come out of the woodwork and they start to uh, attach prophetic significance to these celestial events. This is no different than what Nimrod did in uh, at the Tower of Babel. So be very, very cautious. And all these people that claim to be prophets, now that this has not, not come true, where they were predicting the, the rapture or one thing or another to happen, now we know that they are false prophets. And the Bible says to have nothing to do with them to ignore them. So mark it down in your books, mark it down, and don't be swayed by this. There are enough prophecy in the Bible itself uh, that we can keep keep, uh, keep busy with that, let alone uh, trying to uh, divine significance out of uh, planets lining up or eclipses or one thing or another. So now all these people that said that the rapture was going to happen because they predicted it as soon as they predicted it, if Jesus was going to come back at that time, you can pretty much eliminate it because the word says, only the father knows the hour and the day, and he will tell the son, go get your bride, go get the church. So they've eliminated it. No man knows the hour of the day, not even the angels, not even Jesus, only father God knows that. So enough said about that. Uh, mark it down. And when somebody starts to, uh, on the next heavenly event, they start to say, well, this is going to happen or that happened. I've seen it for a long, long time. That's why I kind of said, nah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Nothing else has to happen in prophecy before Jesus returns to get his church. Yeah. Amen. All right, let's open in a word of prayer and we'll see who we have with us here this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you and praise you for this day and for this time. I thank you for all my brothers and sisters that are diligently searching the scriptures and searching your word. And Lord, we look for your soon coming return. And we are expecting it literally at any moment where you come back and we meet you in the clouds. So Father, let it be right now. Let it be today that you do this. <coughs> let the world think that we've been kidnapped by space aliens or whatever it may be that they're going to say. But Father, we ask Maranatha, come and get us. Amen. And in the meantime, Lord, we carry on. We occupy in your business until you come. Father, open up the word to our eyes. Give us eyes to see right now, ears to hear your voice. And we ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let's see here. Good morning to Renee Zimmerman, watching in Beaumont, California. First one in the house on YouTube. Good morning to Robin Moore, Robin and Daryl. Uh, short timers, those of you that don't know. Robin and Daryl, longtime North Idaho residents. We've known them a long time, and we love them dearly. They are getting ready to retire, and they're going to be moving from North Idaho all the way down to Florida. And so we hope that they stay on Daily Manor. Uh, we're going to miss them, and we're sad, but we're also excited for them. Yes, Robin, we need your address so that <laughs> we can drop in on you. Just kidding. <laughs> anyway. Everybody show some love to Robin and Daryl. Good morning, you guys. Good morning to Kathy Lee Crandall, watching from Idlewild, California. Good morning to Sue Robinson, watching from Hayden, Idaho. And she says, good morning. I got my implant. So far, so good. Trying to get used to it. So praise the Lord. Glad that went well, Sue. We're rejoicing with you. Uh, good morning to Fred and Tara Zobel up at the tip top of Idaho. Hello, friends. Good to see you. There's Daryl. Good morning, Daryl Moore. Good morning to John and Mindy Temblador watching in far north Idaho. The Tremors are in the house. Good morning. Good morning to Melody Smith watching from Apple Valley, California. Good morning to Mike Pogvera watching from northern Illinois. And Mike says, morning all. 
Jesus is coming again. Yes, he is, and very soon. Robin says, please pray for me and Robin. We are going to Florida tomorrow. They are having tornado, I guess, tornado warnings for three days. So, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We lift up our friends to you. We pray for traveling mercies. We ask that you would protect them, go before them, strengthen them, lead them, and guide them. And I pray everything would go well on the, the uh, purchase of their new house. Lord, we ask that you would bless them, Lord, and uh, just take care of them on the road. And we thank you and praise you, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, switching over to Facebook. Good morning to Judy Pogvera watching in Northern Illinois. Good morning to Lori Rosick. Hi, Lori. Good to see you watching in far north Idaho. Good morning to Hans Vanderveen watching from West Branson, Missouri. Hi, Hansie. And Erica's in the house. There's Erica McVeigh watching live. Good morning, little sister. Good to see you, Erica. Good morning to Mama Sita, Sita Vermilia, watching out in Moye Springs. And she says, you will be missed. We love you both. She's talking about Jim and Sita missing Robin and Daryl. And I say amen to that. Good morning to Diane Hankey, watching in Sandpoint, Idaho. Good morning to Marcella Poole and Bill Poole watching in Oak Hills, California. And she says, 69 degrees here in Oak Hills. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, rub it in. Rub it in. <laughs> Enjoy. Just kidding. Good morning to Jim Vermillion. He says, nice shirt, brother. You're heading in the right direction. Thank you. Everybody was giving me a hard time on Sunday because I wore one of my flannel shirts. And everybody knows me in my Hawaiian shirts. Thanks, bro. So I think I think we'll be in Hawaiian for the most most part going forward. Good morning to Nelda Kenzel watching in Western Washington. Um, hi, Mom. Good to see you. Good morning to Pola Bear. Pola Snell watching in Redlands, California. Uh, Pola says, that's a relief about the rapture. Thought you all left me behind. <laughs> no, we wouldn't leave you behind, Pola. I wanted Never. to make a joke about that, too, yesterday. We only had, I guess we got a partial up here. And I went out right at 1136, which was supposed to be the prime time for Idaho. And it was just like a sliver. And I pointed my camera phone up at the heavens. And I got a beautiful picture of the sun through the clouds. But I couldn't tell anything. That was as good as it got. So I, I thought, I wonder if we're only going to have a, a partial rapture here in North Idaho. Just kidding. No, of course, there was no rapture. And like I said at the start of this, this podcast, be very, very aware. This won't be the last time because we'll have another heavenly event. And all these guys come out of the woodwork. They think they've found something. There is prophecy in the Bible uh, that we can be concerned about. But nothing else has to happen before Jesus returns for his church. So the minute that somebody goes to predict when the rapture is going to be, you can pretty much take it to the bank. It's not going to happen then. So good joke, though, about the, the rapture. Everybody was joking about that yesterday. And the sad thing is, is people who are unbelievers, they joked about it and they thought, well, this is just more foolishness. There's nothing to that Christianity stuff. So they actually don't do us a service. Those that make these false predictions, they do us a, a great disservice. And they also draw people away from the gospel of Christ um, because of all their hooey. Good morning to Linda Letterhaus watching up here in far north Idaho. Hi, Linda. Good to see you. Good morning to Chrissy Brown and the Brown family watching from far north Idaho. And she says, good morning, everyone. Today is the day the Lord made. Amen. And it's a beautiful day out there. Good morning to my Cheryl. Morning. <clears throat> good morning to Claudia Jackson watching in western Washington. And who else do we have? Good morning to Bob and Karen Eddy, watching in far north Idaho. Good morning to Don Blackney, watching in Boring, Oregon. And Don says, we survived. Amen. We all did. Uh, good morning to, let's see here, Yvonne Jett, one of the first in the house, watching from Apple Valley, California. And good morning to Randy Ralph. He says, shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Randy. And shalom, shalom to you. And that is like the perfect peace of God. When you say shalom to shalom, shalom, shalom to somebody. Good morning to Howard and Alicia Pierce watching up here in far north Idaho. Good morning to Josephine Dela Cruz. Hi, Josie, also in north Idaho. And Diane Hankey watching in Sandpoint. Good morning. Good morning to Ken and Cheryl Madsen watching in Grand Terrace, California. Good morning to Gil and Linda Hernandez having coffee with the Hernandezes. Good morning. 
Good morning to Becky Hughes, the first one in the house over on Facebook, watching from North Carolina. Good morning to all you guys. Let's see here. Somebody else commented. Good morning to Ingrid Glenn. Hi, Ingrid. Good to see you this morning. And good morning also to Natasha Ollinger, watching in far north Idaho. Diane Hankey says, news said next eclipse will be 2034. I heard one yesterday. We're talking on Fox News. They were saying 2044, so 20 years. Who knows? There'll be other eclipses, no doubt about it. That's the point. They happen all the time. They really do. They're not that uncommon. Good morning to Claudia and Moses Mackay, watching in Apple Valley. Claudia says, good morning, everyone. Love you all, and we love you, too. Good morning to Maureen Maxwell. Hi, Maureen and Richard. Uh, good to see you in there. Where are you guys located now on your RV adventure? Give us an update. And Linda is praying for safe travels. Oh, I see the prayer request. Chrissy Brown. She says, Brian and I will be heading out for a quick vacation tomorrow. Driving, not flying. We would really appreciate prayers for traveling mercies. Let's pray for the Brown family right now. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We lift up Brian and Chrissy and Olivia, Vivian, and Elijah. We ask that you would watch over and protect them, that you would bless them, give them traveling mercies, keep them safe on the road. Lord, I pray that their conversation and what they do in the car, playing games, that it would be a blessing for all of them, laughing and giggling. I pray where they go on vacation that you would bless their time, recharge their batteries, and then bring them safely back to us again. We lift up this beautiful family to you. We love them so much, and we ask that you would take care of them because you love them more. We ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Good morning to Doc Bartlett. Hey, Doc, good to see you watching from the great state of Texas. And good morning to Nancy Noble watching up here in far north Idaho. Hi, Nancy and Mike. Good to see you in there. And let's see, did I miss anybody else? There's Lucille Spindler. Hi, Lucille. Good to see you in there. Good morning to Kim Hensley watching in Flowery Branch, Georgia. Hi, Kim. And... I thought I'd seen somebody else and I might have overlooked it. Let me give it one more quick look. Uh, good morning to Marcella. Mar excuse me, not Marcella. Mark Pere. Hi, Mark. Good to, good to see you watching from Western Montana. Miss you, brother. Good to see you in there as well. Okay, let's dive into God's Word. And right after I say amen this morning, Cheryl and I have to be on the road. I have doctor's appointments down in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene today. Deuteronomy chapter 33, as we're drawing to a close in Deuteronomy, we're almost done. We're not done today. We will be done tomorrow, and then we go right into the book of Joshua. So Deuteronomy is the last book of the Levitical law, if you will. First five books of the Bible, you have Genesis, you have Exodus, you have Leviticus, you have Numbers, and you have Deuteronomy. And from that point on, after that, Joshua, it becomes like a history book in a large sense, talking about the, the children of Israel going into the promised land and the conquest. And from there we go into Judges, the time of the Judges, wicked time, and then First and Second Samuel. So let's continue here. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. Now this is the final blessing of Moses. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. And he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people. All his saints are in your hand. They sit at your feet. Everyone receives your words. Moses commanded a law for us, a heritage of the congregation of Jacob, and he was king in Jeshurun. Now, when I saw that, I'm like, okay, God is king in Jeshurun. What is Jeshurun? So this is one of those moments, if you have a blue letter Bible, or if you're using a Strong's Concordance, you look it up. And Jeshurun just means my beautiful little people. So God is king of his beautiful little people, which would be Israel. And of course, that would be Israel in their perfect state in their perfect state. So I draw this to your attention, not to show that I'm so smart, but to point it out to you because I'm not really that smart. I point it out to you when you see these little words, do word searches and dig a little bit deeper and see what's being said there. 
So that's one of those places. When the leaders of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together, let Reuben live and not die, nor let his men be few. Okay, why would why would God say through Moses, let Reuben die or let Reuben live and not die? What was Reuben's sin? That's your first question of the day. Why would this even be in there? What did Reuben do? Ready, go. Verse 7. And this he said of Judah, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him to his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and may you be a help against his enemies. And of Levi, he said, Let your Thuman and your Urim be with your Holy One. So the Urim and the Thuman, we don't know exactly what they are because they didn't survive through history, but it was thought that they were a couple of stones. Then the priest would carry them in his pocket and he would turn the stones over. And this was kind of like asking God a yes or no question meant to define what God wanted them to do. Uh, so we don't know exactly, but that is just a guess. Uh, and with whom he contended at the waters of Meribah. Verse 9, who says of his father and mother, I have not seen them, nor did he acknowledge his brothers or know his own children. For they have observed your word and kept your covenant. They shall teach Jacob your judgments and Israel your law. They shall put incense before you and a whole burnt sacrifice on your altar. Bless his substance, Lord, and accept the work of his hands. Strike the loins of those who rise against him and of those who hate him that they not rise again. So that's talking about, we've, we've talked about Judah. We've also talked about Levi here and Levi, the priestly tribe of Benjamin. The Benjam Benjamites end up being the smallest tribe in Israel. And there's a there's an event that's going to take place in Judges when we get there. This is why they become the smallest tribe of Israel. So of the Benjamites, we see the first king of Israel rising, King Saul. And later on, we see another guy, also from the tribe of Benjamin, Saul of Tarsus, who ends up becoming Paul the Apostle from the smallest and beloved tribe, the youngest son of Jacob. The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him who shelters him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And of Joseph, he said. So if you count up all the tribes, all the tribes of Israel, you actually end up with more than 12 because you have Manasseh, you have Ephraim, those are half tribes. They come from the line of Joseph. Oftentimes Joseph is left off on the counting, but here he's included. <clears throat> Blessed of the Lord is, is his land. With the precious things of heaven, with the dew and the deep lying beneath, with the precious fruits of the sun, with the precious produce of the months, with the best things of the ancient mountains, with the precious things of the everlasting hills, with the precious things of the earth and its fullness and the favor of him who dwelt in the bush, like the burning bush. Let the blessing come on the head of Joseph. And on the crown of the head of him who was separate from his brothers, his glory is like a firstborn bull, and his horns like the horns of a wild ox. Together with them he shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Now both these sons, these were sons of Joseph, but they were adopted by Jacob. They were adopted by Israel. So hence you see Manasseh and Ephraim, they're included in the 12 tribes. We also see Joseph named here. <clears throat> so let me stop there at verse 18 real quick. What did Reuben do? What did Reuben do? Good morning to Bob and Diane Bell watching up here. What's that? He was a naughty boy. Sorry. Oh, Reuben? Yes. Good morning, Bob and Diane Bell. I got off track there for a second. So let me go over to Facebook. Nobody's answering on YouTube. You guys wake up on YouTube. All right, good morning to Sandy Moniz watching in far north Idaho. Sandy and Mike, good morning to you. <clears throat> and let's see, Rob Murray says, the Urim and the Thuman turned out to be Joseph Smith's hat, laughing out loud. No, they weren't. So all kinds of goofy stuff. If you come from a Mormon background, like the Murrays and like I do, that Joseph Smith twisted the word of God. Matter of fact, the Book of Mormon was based largely on the Old Testament of the Bible, and he twisted a bunch of stuff. So the difference between the Bible, again, you have 66 books written by 40 different authors, 
in three different languages over a 2,000 year period on three different continents, as opposed to the Book of Mormon written by one man, and it's one book, and nobody ever saw the manuscripts written in a language that never existed using a pair of magic sunglasses that nobody has ever seen. So you see the difference. Also, Joseph Smith and his background, if you look at his history, he was arrested a couple of times for fraud, and he actually went down in a blaze of glory when uh, he was arrested before the wagon train, or the handcart, I should say, went across to the west to what is present day Utah, or Deseret, as it was known back in the day. So Bob is making a funny. Uh, let's see. Judy Park Veras says, slept with Bill Ha, so incest, or basically uncovering his father's nakedness. Yeah, you're not to... You're not to sleep with your father's concubine because not only is that wicked and evil and it uncovers her nakedness, but it also uncovers his. So good job, Judy. Becky Hughes uh, slept with his father's concubine. Linda Hernandez, you got that one right as well. Jim Vermilia, correct. Sita, correct. And there's Rob Murray saying, good morning, Pastor Bob. Travel and mercies for you as you travel to and from Coeur d'Alene and Spokane. Thank you so much. Appreciate your prayers, gang. Becky Hughes says, kids can be a nightmare on vacation, but you should let them go back home with you. I agree. That must be towards the Browns. No, no. She's being um, funny again. Morning. She's leaving the kids. Oh, I see. Okay. I haven't got there yet. Sorry. Good morning to Mike and Cheryl Conklin watching in far north Idaho. Hi, guys. Maureen says, just leaving the kids in Florida and heading home. We think we're taking I-10. Okay. That's a long way when you go through. I-10 in Texas. Texas seems to last forever, but I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. So safe travels. Let's pray for Mike and, or excuse me. Oh, I hate when I do that. Um, for Maureen and Richard, I beg your pardon. Old habits die hard. Uh, Mike, her first husband went home to be with the Lord several years ago, and we have known uh, Maureen many, many years. So that's ingrained in my memory banks. My apologies. So, Father God, we lift up our dear friends. We, rip, rip, we lift up Richard and Maureen to you. We pray that you would bless them, watch over, and keep them safe on the road, that you would bring them safely back home again to Apple Valley. And, Lord, I just ask that you would bless their time together and bless all they touch. And I pray it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. And the kids in that case that they're leaving in Florida, they're adult kids. That's uh, hey, Dakota and his know. wife, Sierra. Pardon? No, it's, it's Dakota. Dakota and Sierra. Yeah, yeah, sorry, you're right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got it right. And Cheryl's correcting me. <laughs> uh, good morning to Efren Villa Luz. Nice to see you in there, Efren. I believe you're watching from Seattle, Washington. Top of the day to you, brother. And let me get back down to the bottom. <clears throat> oh, Randy says, praying for answers and good results. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate that. This is a different uh, set of doctor's appointments. Today, I'm going for my yearly eye test to get my prescriptions renewed, and I do have like a suspect area on my nose. I have to go see the dermatologist. Uh, Rob says, your explanation is why I laugh out loud was making a joke. Amen. And I, I laugh at it too. Okay, let's continue on. So anyone that said he slept with his father's concubine, there's Fred and Tara popping in with that as well. You're absolutely right. That is two gold stars. Tuesday, what do we do on Tuesday? Maybe coffee and donuts. I don't know. Maybe, uh, or Taco Tuesday. It could be tacos. That's right. It is Taco Tuesday. That's what it is. Verse 18, and of Zebulun, he said, rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the peoples to the mountain, for they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall partake of the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hidden in the sand. So these areas, Zebulon and Issachar, these are up around the Sea of Galilee, and they also, their tribal areas will end up being right along the Mediterranean, ballpark in there. So right near the sea, also the Sea of Galilee, the treasures there, that's where most of the fishermen go, uh, the fishermen of Israel. And the Israeli people are not known as a seagoing people. They're just not. And Randy is coming in with some good street tacos. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Verse 20, and of Gad, he said, blessed is he who enlarges Gad. He dwells as a lion and tears the arm and the crown of his head. He provided the first part for himself because a lawgiver's portion was reserved there. He came with the heads of the people 
he administered the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. <coughs> and of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess the west and the south. Now, Naphtali is, Naphtali is kind of a neat thing because where Jesus grew up, that would have been in the tribal area of Naphtali. And of Asher, he said, Asher is most blessed of sons. Let him be favored by his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. Your sandals shall be iron and bronze. As your day, show, so shall your strength be. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun. There it is again, meaning my beautiful little people who rides the heavens to help you and is in his excellency on the clouds. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Then Israel shall dwell in safety, the fountain of Jacob alone in a land of grain and new wine. The heavens shall also drop dew. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty. Your enemies shall submit to you and you shall tread down their high places. What's a high place? What's a high place? What does it mean by treading down your high places? Ready, go. Now, one more thing as we complete our Deuteronomy. What are you saying, Cheryl? Ask Reuben. Ask Reuben about the high places. Yeah, it was a high bed. It was probably a four-poster bed. Uh, but I'm stopping right there. Okay, so you see here, this is all blessing, the blessing of Moses upon the people. And we know that there are tough times yet ahead for the nation of Israel. But God sees be beyond that tough time. He sees all the way into the millennial reign, the millennial reign of Christ when Israel will be completely restored, all their borders, all the blessings, the earth will be returned to the time when it was before the great flood, when everything was perfect. And that will be for a thousand years. So God has seen Israel, how they will be. He's looking past all the tough stuff, all the, all the judgments that are going to take place on the nation of Israel. So we're going to land the plane there on our Old Testament reading. I'm going to check your answers in just a second. And in the meantime, welcome to the Daily Manna if you joined us for the first time. This is the one-year Bible along with some commentary. We meet here every morning at 8.30 a.m. Pacific on Facebook, YouTube, and on our church website located at mthallcc.com. And we go line by line and word by word through the scripture. We, I also want to acknowledge our ministry partner, Truthcasting. So if you go to stream.truthcasting.com, you will also see that our live streams are there. They also maintain a library on demand that you can go to at any time. And they are responsible for splitting our stream between all the platforms. We're grateful for them. And this is a Christian organization. It's designed to help pastors like me and pastors of churches all over the place so that the wokeness of the culture that we live in right now cannot shut churches down or their voices. So if I get shut down on one platform, the idea is you can go to another. And if both Facebook and YouTube goes, goes down, we'll st still be on our website and we'll still be on Truthcasting. So bookmark all those places where you know to go to find Daily Manna. Also, if you check out on our website, in addition to lots of sermons and studies and good stuff on there, in, in addition to what we do on Sunday morning or midweek, Mount Hall also uh, sponsors Trail Life and American Heritage Girls, as well as Spires of Wisdom, our home homeschool group. Uh, we firmly believe in training up the next generation for Jesus Christ. And if you look under the link that says Daily Manna Reading Schedule on the website, you will also find a link for a calendar-looking page for every month of the year that will tell you where we're going to be at any given time. Now, in between our Old Testament reading and our New Testament reading where we are right now, this is where we say good morning and hello to our young people. Before I do that, I'm going to acknowledge your answers here. What is a high place? Bob Bell says, places of worship to worship foreign gods. Very good. That is correct. So Israel is going to stomp those down, destroy them. Only the, the worship of the one true God will be when that's finally realized. 
Claudia Jackson says, idol worshiping places. Absolutely right. Judy Pogvera says, I'll be flying to Texas tomorrow. Family reunion. I am praying for you and testing. Thank you very much. Let's pray for Judy for traveling mercies as she's flying. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We lift up Judy to you. We ask that you would keep her safe on the road going to the airport. Whether she's going to O'Hare or Midway, we ask that you would bless her, keep her safe. We ask that you would bless her in the air, that you would bless her time with family, and then give her traveling mercies back home again. Watch over and protect them and keep them safe and bless their time together. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Becky Hughes says, cutting their idols down to size. Very good. Judy Pogvera, it's an elevated place used for idolatry, idolatry, correct? Linda Hernandez destroyed the idol worship areas. Good job. And good evening to Samuel Mombashi watching from Tanzania, East Africa. Good evening to you, Samuel. And let's see, Randy was handing out rewards for there. So anyone that said idol worship, place of idol worship, also right. Now, if you're new to Daily Man, I also want to point out that just about each and every city when you go to Israel, they would have a like a elevated stage area, usually adjacent to the city gates. And oftentimes, whether it was the worship of the one true God, where they would uh, sacrifice there, or whether it was to a false idol, this would be an elevated place in town. It can also be a high place like on top of a mountain, or it can be in a grove, like Shittim Grove or Acacia Grove, as it's also known. These are all examples of high places, and high places are a bad thing. And I, I said those two airports, and Judy says Milwaukee, the one I left out. Milwaukee is actually easy in and easy out. We really like that airport. So uh, Judy says O'Hare is housing illegals. I didn't know that. But I can just imagine in woke Chicago, that makes sense. And Randy, true to, true to form with Taco Tuesday, Chili Peppers. Thank you, Randy. You are a thinker, brother. You really are. Okay, let's say hi to our young people right now. So if you have a child or grandchild, great-grandchild, niece or nephew, let me know who they are or where they're watching from so that I can include them on our list. In Idaho, good morning to Sue Robinson again and to her grandkids, Kinsley, Macy, Emmy, and Deacon. In Boundary County, good morning to Jeremy and Nicole and their kids, Jediah, Aiden, and Mabel. Good morning to Ron and Christy Campbell and their kids, Melanie and Joe. Good morning again to CJ and Erica McVeigh. Erica is watching live this morning. And little Ellie and Bjorn. Hi, guys. Pastor Bob says hi. Good morning. Good morning to Eric and Linda Lederhaas and their granddaughter, Brindley. Good morning to Eric and Lucille Spindler once again and their kids, Richter and Tsunami. Good morning to Brian and Chrissy Brown and Livy, Viv, and Eli. Olivia, Vivian, and Elijah. Good morning to John and Jenna Hardman. That's Pacific Northwest Jenna. I haven't seen her in there this morning. But also their kids, Evie, Josiah, and Samuel. Good morning to Brandon and Alicia Shaver and their kids, Samuel, Victoria, and Matthew. Hi, guys. Good morning to Randy and Lainey Ralph and their grandkids, Luke and Noah, the giblets up on Cacta Ridge. Good morning to Frank and Diane Hankey and their grandson, Boomerang, watching from Sandpoint. Good morning to Dave and Stephanie Wood and their kids, Hunter, Ryder, and Flynn. Good morning to Cody and Shauna Dawn, the writers, and their kids, Gavin and Kennedy. Good morning to Sarah Falk and her daughter, Addie. Good morning to Fred and Tara, also Don and Jana. They're adults, but I've got them in on the kids anyway. Good morning to Bob and Tatiana Hargrove and their daughters, Victoria and Emily in South Carolina. Good morning to Renee Moore and her daughter, Mallory. Excuse me. Good morning to Heidi and Aaron Kendall in Alpine, Wyoming, and their kids, Carson and Nora. In Topeka, Kansas, good morning to Leah McGahey and Bala. In Boring, Oregon, good morning to Don Blackney, and good morning also to Elaine Baker, that's Shauna's mom and dad. In California, good morning to Dave and Lisa Baptist in Apple Valley, and their daughters, Lainey, Freya, and Kennedy. In Grand Terrace, California, good morning to Ken and Cheryl Madsen, and their granddaughter, Aubrey. Good morning to Terry Lockwood, and Hannah and Rachel, her daughters. Good morning to Letitia Jordan and her sons, Elisha and Isaiah. Good morning to Crystal Reese and her kids, Caleb, Elijah, and Savannah. Good morning to Ernie and Amanda Joy Custodio and their kids, Jason, Lala, and Lexi. Good morning to Pastor Andrew and Jackie 
and their kids, Karis, Judah, Titus, and Malachi, the Fergusons. Good morning on the road, leaving Florida to Richard and Maureen Maxwell, their kids, Chad and Krista, Dakota and Sierra, and grandkids, Ashlyn, Rose, and Jackson. Ashlyn, Rose, and Jackson are still in Apple Valley. Good morning to Cheryl Lady and her grandson, Jax. Good morning to Tony and Judy Meston and their grandkids, Liam, Kylie, Shelby, Peyton, and Samuel. Hi, Liam, if you're watching live, good morning to you. Good morning to Sandra Baxkai and her kids, Grace, Hope, Ezekiel, and Mercy. Good morning to Sarah Suter's Reinschild and Nathan Tucker and Easton. And Nathan is on the road again. And I guess they're continuing on with Agents of Christ going on the mission field once again. So keep those kids in prayer. Good morning to Laco and Jessica Vaher watching from Livermore, California, and their son Brody. Good morning to Mike and Judy Pogvera watching in Northern Illinois and their grandkids, Bowen, Wyatt, and Honora. And last but not least, good morning to Kim Hensley in Flowery Branch, Georgia, and her grandkids, John, Jake, Deacon, Briley, and Ellie. Top of the day to all of you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. <clears throat> Marcella Poole says, prayer request as we go today. I will speaking to our school board in closed session today. Please pray that I... Represent him well while we handle a grievance and resolve inequities for special needs children across our district. I don't think I'll have a job after tonight. I'll be okay with that. God will provide. Let's pray for our sister who's taking a stand for righteousness right now. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. I, I thank you for Bill and Marcella for their strength to stand against uh, wrong. I ask, Lord, that you would fill her afresh with your sweet Holy Spirit that you would give her wisdom beyond her years, that her words are your words, that you would lead and guide and protect her, that you would be her shield, her rock, her fortress, and her deliverer. And I pray for this board. I ask that you would soften their hearts, that the board would be open to what she has to say. And Lord, we ask that uh, where there is there's inequality, that you would straighten out that road, that you would make it straight, that you would destroy all the, the wokeness or uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, all that stuff where it comes in. And it really what it does is creates division and favoritism. Father, I ask that you would bless Marcella, give her strength right now, give her wisdom, and let her words be your words. And I pray it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay. Let's see. Everybody's praying for Marcella. Yay, yay. That's what we do. Good morning to Sandra Backsky, watching from Apple Valley, California. All right, we're now in the New Testament, Luke chapter 13, Bible gang, Luke chapter 13. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galilean, whose, Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Okay, we don't know specifically historically what happened here, but we know that Pilate was an interesting guy. Pontius Pilate he came up from basically a working class family. He served in the Roman military, he served in the legions, and he became what was known, what would later be known as a knight. Due to, uh, due to valiant and gallant service ser serving in the Roman army, he actually gained reputation and status. He eventually was married with uh, his wife, and I, her name escapes me right now, was actually from a upper upper class family and so he married well and then this arranged for his posting now when he goes to the middle east when he is stationed there in judea and he's the governor over the region he had a very difficult time because he's coming from a warrior background he has to get along with these people but he's also ruling with an iron sword now we know of one such instance where pontius pilate he wanted to create and build an aqueduct, but he didn't have the money that was coming from Rome. So he wanted to dip in to the temple treasury. And there were protests against that because you don't touch God's money, obviously. And it was famously reported that Pilate sent some of his soldiers, uh, centurions and legionnaires, and he dressed them undercover like they were Jews into the crowd. And then they threw off their garments and stabbed a whole bunch of people and killed them to death. So what would end up happening is the Jewish religious leadership, they, they were very tight with the Roman government as well, with, with Caesar. That's how Herod served. Herod's kids grew up with the Caesar's kids. 
They, they would send them off to school and they would go to college or what have you back in Rome. And so the Jewish religious leadership would end up reporting Pontius Pilate for his brutality. So Pilate, when we see that uh, Jesus is actually on trial before him, he's trying to walk a fine line. He wants to represent Rome well and rule with an iron fist, but at the same time, he doesn't want to anger the Jews. This is why he was duplicitous in his, uh, in his uh, decisions, when really he should have let get Jesus go. Anyway, so we don't know historically exactly what Luke is talking about here, but this is the type of backdrop that he's against. So do good things happen to bad people? Yeah, they do. Do bad things happen to good people? Yeah, we talk about it all the time. Oftentimes in our life, in our world today, you're going to see some very, very wicked people that are going to do well for a long time. But we also read in our reading that it's going to catch up with them. It will find them out. How about do bad things happen to good people? Yeah. So these Galileans that we're going to be reading about this morning, there's probably no reason why they should die. But Jesus is saying, look, we're all going to meet an end. We're all going to come to that place. And what's important is, is that we're walking with Christ. We're seeking his face. And we're, we're doing our very best to live in godliness and follow after him. So let's go on. I'm getting ahead of him, uh, ahead of myself. And Jesus answered and said to them, do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them. Do you think that they were worse sinners than all the other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it, and he found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it, and if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. So Jesus, again, speaking a parable. A parable. A parable is a riddle written to the multitudes. And the idea is that they're going to think about this and figure it out. Most of the time, they didn't. Now, Jesus typically would explain the parable to his disciples, to his men, to his men and women that followed him. I don't want to leave the gals out too. There were a lot of lady disciples as well. But oftentimes, when we first become a Christian, when we ask Jesus Christ to be our Savior, we're also not asking him to be our Lord. We are Christians in name only. And sometimes it takes a time of fertilization, a time of mentoring, maybe discipling and strife. And remember, out of our word disciple, we get our word discipline, like getting a spanking from our parents when we did something bad. Now, Jesus, in this parable, he talks about fertilizing the ground. What do you fertilize the soil with? Poop. When you're going through a growing process as a Christian, when you're being mentored and discipled and you're growing stronger in the Lord, before you get to that place where you uh, actually start to produce fruit in your life, a lot of times it's going to feel like you're buried in poop, like you're buried in manure. And who wants to be around manure? Maybe you step in dog poo out in your backyard. I do that all the time with the two knuckleheads we have here. I have to go out there and pick it up. But occasionally one of those landmines, it finds me or even turkey poop. And I know you guys in North Idaho, you can relate to that. You don't see it all the time. And we don't like to be in poop, do we? But sometimes that's what's necessary for the fertilization to take place, for the spankings to take place before, as Christians, we come to produce fruit. Good morning to Sarah Thomas, watching from far north Idaho. She says, good morning, family. God is good. Amen. Cody Ogie's in the house. Good morning, Cody. Good to see you the other night. It's nice to have you back with us on Daily Man. And Cody, everybody, if you haven't already heard, she is leaving Mount Hall. She's moving. Her and her husband are moving back down to Kootenai County. And Cody, I hope you continue to tune in on Daily Manna. We will miss you and the girls. Let's pray for Cody and the girls right now.
Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We lift up our sister to you. We lift up your daughter, and we know that you love her even more than we do. We ask that you would guide and protect her and her husband, Evan, that you would keep them safe, Lord, that you would plant them in their new church, whatever church they choose down there. I think they're going to rafter them, but I'm not sure. Lord, I ask that you would bless them, lead them, guide them, protect them, that you would plant them in your word and establish them in the faith and keep them safe, Lord. They're still part of the family. They're just in a different branch now. We thank you and praise you. We look forward to that time when we were, we all are going to be together with you in heaven, around your throne, and there will be no more separation from us. We ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All righty here. Who else do we have? There's Shauna Dawn. Good morning, Shauna Dawn. And I think I'm caught up. Sue Gibson says, good morning. We are traveling to Kalispell now for Bruce's appointment at the VA for his lungs. We will catch up what we can as long as we have reception. So, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We pray for Bruce and Sue. We ask that you would keep them safe on the road. I pray that everything goes well at the VA, that you would lead them, guide them, protect them, keep them safe, and, Lord, bless their time together. And I ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay, so I hope that makes sense about this fruit tree where it bears fruit. The God will do the same thing in your life as he did in mine. Oftentimes through that mentoring process, through that stretching and discipleship process, it's not always fun, is it? But God will grow us to where we are producing fruit in our life. Sometimes it's painful. Verse 10, now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. Notice here, this is a synagogue. This is a synagogue. A synagogue means that if they're like, if it's in a small town, there must be, a, if there's at least 10 Jews in that town, they must build a synagogue. It was typically the, they tried to get the tallest building or the highest point in the town with at least one window that faced towards Jerusalem. Now this takes place in the synagogue and we see this woman has a spirit of infirmity. This spirit, probably a demon. This is where we're talking about demon possession here. Now, where is she at? She's in a holy place, right? She's in a synagogue, an assembly, a gathering together of believers. The word that's used for synagogue, synagogue is actually a Greek word, but the Hebrew word uh, that corresponds to it is Knesset. The Knesset is the assembly. That's the parliament of today over in Israel. So Knesset or assembly or a gathering together. And the idea is they're like-minded. Do we have evil that will come into our churches? Yeah, we do. There are evil people that come into churches. I just read a uh, story. It was on Fox News this morning that the FBI arrested a young man down in, uh, I believe it was the Coeur d'Alene area, that planned to carry out terrorist attacks on behalf of ISIS last Sunday in churches or in a church in North Idaho, in the Coeur d'Alene area. I'm not sure which one exactly. I don't really know anyone anymore in the FBI where I could even find out, but I did share that, that information with local pastors, so they're aware. And hopefully all of our churches have a church security team where we have people that are watching out for this, where we make it so that when we go to church, that it's a safe place. But yeah, there is evil that comes into churches. Not everybody that goes to church is a Christian, are they? And just like not everybody that went into the synagogue was really Israel or governed by God. Let's go on. So this woman has the spirit of infirmity. This is an evil spirit. This is a demonic possession here that caused her where she could never look up at the sun. She couldn't look up at the stars or the sky and she couldn't get rid of this thing. So what is the synagogue leader doing about it? Not much, as we'll see. Verse 12, but when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Okay, here's one. Here's a question for you guys that's gonna cause you to put your thinking caps on and you have to think Jewish for this. You have to think from an Old Testament perspective. What does the laying on of hands represent? What does the laying on of hands represent? 
ready, go. And Cody says, amen, thank you. We will miss you all, and we'll miss you too. Good morning to Brenda Barber. Hi, Brenda. I forget where you're watching from, but welcome to the Daily Manna. Nice to have you back. And good morning to Leah McGahee, watching from Topeka, Kansas. Okay, so what does the laying on of hands represent? Now, we know Jesus didn't need to lay hands on this woman in order to heal her. He could speak it forth, but there's a reason why he does this. Verse 13, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. Now, by the laying on of hands, he had touched her. Therefore, he is looking at it, the synagogue leader, as a work, that he had actually broken the Sabbath law by lifting a finger, kind of like when they punch an elevator button in Israel. And he said to the crowd, there are six days. He doesn't say this to Jesus. He speaks to the multitude. There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite. Hypocrite, again, an actor, somebody who is two-faced, two-faced. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, so she's Jewish, uh, and the law was supposed to lead the Jewish people into a close relationship and walk with God, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed on this bond on the Sabbath. So this indicates to us this woman was lost in her sins. She was following the law, but with the wrong heart. She was not walking after what God would want her to do. And she, she was demon possessed. This, this infirmity was of Satan. This is not just a regular infirmity. Satan is behind it. Uh, let's see. Verse 17, and when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then he said, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and put in the garden, and it grew and became a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in its branches. And again, he said, to what shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. So when sin comes into a synagogue, when sin comes into a church, and it's in one person, oftentimes, if, it, if it's allowed to continue, that leaven's going to spread to the whole batch. The synagogue or gathering together of believers, or thought to be believers, it really was a den of iniquity, if you will. Now, no doubt when this, this demon left, this woman, and she was healed, and she was saved, by the way. Um, at that point, probably the demon went into the synagogue later, leader because he didn't even have the courage to address Jesus to his face. Instead, he does what a, what a coward does. He tries to rally the crowd around him. Okay, so what does it mean by the laying on of hands? And again, uh, this you have to think from a Jewish perspective, an Old Testament perspective. Uh, if you really are, are looking at this. So Sita says to bless them or to bless this woman. And that's part of it. That is certainly it. And let's see, I'll come back to your prayer request, Sandra. I see it there. Let me answer the, or look at these answers real quick. And Nelda Kenzel guesses and says the Holy Spirit, not quite, not quite. Think Old Testament here. Uh, Alicia Pierce says taking the sin away. Now, if you're talking about the laying of hands and you would lay hands on a sacrifice like the scapegoat, that would be transferring the sin onto that animal and then they would let the scapegoat loose. It would go out into the wilderness. So that could be in that avenue. Judy Pogvera says anointing, Holy Spirit bless. Uh, Judy Pogvera says anointing. Okay, so I think I might've stumped you a little bit. So remember when like... In December, when I when I retired from being senior pastor at Mount Hall Community Church, and then I laid hands on my replacement, I laid hands on Pastor Jeremy, and myself and all the elders prayed for him. It was a passing of the torch, but it also brings them into the ministry. 
So this woman who had been demon possessed, she becomes a believer. She glorifies God. And I know this is a stretch, but I want you to see the figuratism here by the laying on of hands. He, Jesus didn't need to do this to heal her because he had done it before. He had just spoken people healed. But he actually brings her into it where the synagogue before had been a place where no one was a believer. Now this woman was a believer and God is glorified. I don't think that synagogue leader would be there very long. But Jesus makes a he makes an analogy here. And he says, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed, one of the smallest of the seeds. And when it grows, it becomes a large tree and birds of the air nest in it. So from one person, can revival break out? You bet. Revival can break out, even through a woman who had been demon possessed and unable to stand up straight. Don't miss the hidden meanings here, what Jesus is doing. Sondra Backsky says, please pray for my granddaughter Mackenzie as court tomorrow for a man who assaulted her at a gas station and hurt her. Thank you. Okay, let's pray for Sondra's granddaughter Mackenzie right now. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that we can come to you in prayer. We lift up Mackenzie to you. We ask that you would be her shield, her fortress, her protector. And I know how difficult it is to stand in open court and face somebody that has hurt you. I ask that you would give her strength, that you would encourage her, that you would fill her afresh with your Holy Spirit, that she would speak the words of truth, that you would keep her safe, and then, Father, that she would be released from any fear and anxiety that this person has caused her. Lord, we pray that this person, even in their evil deed, that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. But Lord, we ask that also that justice would be done here, that you would take care of your daughter Mackenzie, that you would protect her. And Father, we pray that the right thing is done and that you would also give the judge wisdom behind, beyond his or her years. We thank you and praise you, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So Sandra, please keep us updated. Please keep us updated. So like if you're saying bless or anoint Holy Spirit, that's part of it. But don't miss the bigger picture also. Jesus can do a mighty work even through one person. Okay, let's continue on in our, our reading. Turn back to the Old Testament again. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. And we pick up at verse 65. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep, like a ma mighty man who shouts because of wine. And he beat back his enemies. He put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he rejected the tent of Joseph, and he did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. So Ephraim was thought to be like the chief or the head of the tribes up in the north, but he chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. Now this is a statement because Joseph, when you look at the story of Joseph in the Old Testament, he is a type or a model of Jesus Christ. He's a type of Savior for the people of Israel. But God didn't choose them to be the, the royal tribe, did he? Instead, he chose Judah. And Judah, if you look at his life, wasn't particularly good. He marries a Canaanite woman, and he has two sons. Two sons, and these sons are kind of wicked and evil. What are the names of these two sons? By the way, they were killed. What were the names of the two sons of Judah? Ready, go. That's going to be your last question of the day, by the way. And verse 69, he built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth, which he established forever. He also chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes that had young, he brought them to shepherd Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Okay, we finish up this morning. We're in Proverbs 12.25. Proverbs 12.25. I'm going to start first in the New King James Version. And then let's look at this through, let's look at the New Living Translation this morning. Good morning to Roberta Coffey watching in Phelan, California. Nice to see you in there. And I'll look at the answers to the question again. What are the names of the sons of Judah, two wicked men? Proverbs 12, 25, first through the New King James Version. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Let's look at that now through the New Living Translation. Proverbs 12, 25.
Worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. Boy, that really does a number on it, doesn't it? Really, really good. Okay, I'm going to close in, in prayer here in just a second. What are the names of the two sons of Judah? Linda Hernandez says Ephraim and Manasseh. That's the two sons of Joseph, not of Judah. Chrissy Brown says love is love is a good word. Love a, love a good word. Oh, okay, I get it. Praise God. Marcella says, Bob, bless your travels to and from today. Thank you very much. Sita says, Ur and Onan. Absolutely right. Good job, Sita. Judy Pogvera, Ur and Onan. Uh, so Ur was the first one. God struck him down, the firstborn, because he was wicked. Onan then went into his brother's wife uh, to do the righteous thing. He liked having sex, but he pulled out and uh, actually spilled his seed on the ground what became known as Onanism, which is another another way of saying that, that would be those that would say that uh, masturbation is a sin. They call it Onanism. Just a little side note. So Ur and Onan, that is correct. We just learned something. And Sandra Backsky says Perez and Onan. It's Ur and Onan. Perez comes from the union between... Um, uh, Tamar. Thank you. I almost said Rahab, but the wrong woman. So Tamar and Judah, right. So that's another story in and of itself. Good morning to Diane Malone watching from Nashville, Tennessee. And she says our dad is still in the hospital. Okay, we're going to pray for Diane. We're going to pray for Diane and Daryl's dad here in just a minute. All right. So yeah, thank you very much, Marcella. Tamar and Judah had one of those moments. It happens to all of us. So I wanted to say almost like the wrong woman, but it, that's an interesting side note. If you look at the genetical line of Jesus Christ, of, of our Messiah, he has some very shady characters in his line, doesn't he? But that's a study for another day. Right now, we have to get on the road. So we're going to close in prayer. Let's pray for these people. And as the Lord brings them to remembrance throughout the day, um, then I ask that you would pray for them as well. Let's pray right now. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We lift up Diane, who's in the hospital right now herself. We ask for your healing touch on her, that you would restore her strength, restore her health, and bless her. I pray for Daryl and Diane's dad. I ask for continued healing on him as he begins his physical therapy. Lord, I ask that he would learn how to walk again with his new limitations. I ask that you would give comfort and strength to him and also the rest of the family, Lord. Encourage them, strengthen them. I pray for Natasha. I pray for her upcoming procedure, her surgery that's coming up. I ask that you would bless her, touch her, and heal her. Also, her husband, Granite. I pray for Lori, also for her appointment on the 25th. I ask that you would bless the doctor, give him wisdom beyond his years. And I pray for uh, your healing touch on our sister, Lori. Also, comfort and strength on her and her husband, Brian. I pray for, oh, oh, have I got something for you guys. Praise report, big time. Jeff and Tia, you guys, we've been praying for Jeff. I get this text yesterday, and I got to read this to you. This is amazing. Okay, give me just a minute. You're going to want to hear this. This came in yesterday just before 7 p.m. Jeff sent me a text. I wanted to give you the good news personally. My second scan on Friday showed no cancer. The Gamma Knife doctor and the Bonner General radiologist spent a good bit of time in conversation about it by the doctor's account, and they have no explanation for it. We do, don't we? We serve a good, good God. Two scans, a week and a day apart. I saw the results myself from the, the first and saw nothing. I can explain it, though, and I know you can too. Praise God. Miracles are real. Prayer has power. Nothing is beyond his ability. They want me back in three months for another scan to follow up. We serve a God that heals. We serve a God that hears our prayers. Miracles still happen today, Bible gang. Okay, let's go on. So we praise the Lord for Jeff's results. Continue to pray for him and his family. He is just rejoicing right now, and we rejoice with him, don't we? Good uh, Lord, we just pray for Sabi in Southern California. We pray for healing of her cirrhosis of the liver. We pray for baby Carter, Lord. We need another miracle here. Heal this little girl supernaturally, completely, just the same way that you healed our brother Jeff. Lord, heal her and then bring her parents to salvation. 
I pray for Don Mason. We need your healing touch on him, both for the cancer and also for his salvation of his soul. I pray for Jojo Murray. Lord, we need another healing here. Completely touch, minister, heal, and touch her, strengthen her. And I pray for comfort and strength for both her and her husband, Rob. I pray for Melody Smith, also healing of her migraine headaches, Lord. Take them away from her completely. I pray for Mary for healing over her breast cancer and also restoration of her vision. I pray for Dawn. Lord, we ask for healing of Dawn Stanford's autoimmune diseases. Lord, that his uh, knee replacement would go without a hitch, that you would restore his strength, restore his health. Bless him and bless his wife, Jana. Lord, I pray for Frank for healing over his diabetic wound. I pray for Caleb and Casey and Riley for healing over Deshane's. We need a big miracle there, Lord. I ask that you would be glorified and magnified, that you would heal these three little kids, and that, Lord, that they would sing your praises. I pray also for uh, these three little kids, for their mom, Danielle, that you would restore her faith, that you would strengthen her, bless her, draw her back into fellowship. Also, her daughter, Michaela, Lord, strengthen them in their walk with Jesus Christ. I pray for our, our uh, sister, Yvonne Jett. I pray for complete healing of her lungs, that you would restore her strength and restore her vitality and her health. I pray for Hans, our brother in Missouri. I ask that you would comfort and strengthen and heal him, also the kids and the grandkids. Lord, I pray for Kevin and Aaron Green at Calvary Chapel, Fort Bragg, that you would comfort and strengthen and heal them, also their kids, Amy and Tyler. And Father, we pray for your defense and your protection of your people, Israel, of the nation of Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we ask, Lord, that our nation would stay out of their way and just support Israel because you tell us clearly in your word, God blesses those who bless Israel and curses those who curse Israel. Lord, protect them. Let our people here in the United States not believe the lie. And Father, we pray for a future and a hope for our country. We pray, Father, for your soon coming return. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come quickly, we pray. And we give you our lives today as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to you which is our reasonable service. We thank you and praise you, Lord, and we ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Cheryl and I, we love you. Have a yeah. wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow here on the Daily Manna. God bless you. Bye-bye. Have a yeah. wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow here on the Daily Manna. God bless you. Bye-bye.